Physics lecture number three, velocity, time, graphs, and acceleration. Suppose you're sitting in a car at rest with a camera. When the car starts to move in a straight line, you take a picture of the speedometer at one second intervals. And at the end of six seconds, you have the following data. Okay, so the car's at rest, so the initial velocity is zero. One second later, the car's moving five meters per second. Two seconds later, the car's moving at 10 meters per second. Three, at three seconds, uh, it's moving at 15 meters per second, and so on. Now, if we plot time on the horizontal axis and velocity on the uh, vertical axis, uh, we get the following graph. Okay, so at, once, so at zero seconds, uh, the car's at rest. At one second, it's moving at five meters per second. At two seconds, it's moving at 10 meters per second, and uh, so on. Now, it looks like the uh, car is going faster as time passes. And notice that the line slants upward. And we can make the uh, following conclusion. In a velocity time graph, a line slanting upward from left to right indicates that the speed is increasing. Now, what's the rate at which the speed is increasing? If we pick two points, uh, we're going to pick this point here, 315 and uh, 4 comma 20. So these two points right here are what we're going to pick. Um, uh, we can calculate the change in velocity that occurs over a change in time. So using points 315 and 420, these two points right here, um, to get the slope, it's the change in the vertical so it's going to be 20 minus 15. 20 minus 15 gives me 5 here over uh, the change in the horizontal, 4 minus 3. We have 4 minus 3 right here. So the change in the vertical is 5, and the change in the horizontal is 1. So we see that here. The change in the vertical is 5, and the change in the horizontal is is one. So this shows us that each second the velocity increases by five meters per second. And thus the rate at which speed is increasing is five meters per second per second. Or a way of abbreviating it is saying five meters per second squared. Uh, five meters per second squared is also known as the acceleration of the object. Change in velocity divided by change in time also gives the slope of the line. Thus, in a velocity time graph, the slope of the line gives the acceleration of the object. The acceleration A of an object can be calculated using A equals change in velocity over time. And change in velocity is Vf, the final velocity, minus Vi, the initial velocity, over the change in time. Tf, the final time, minus Ti, the initial time. And a lot of times they don't give us TF and TI, they just tell us what the change in time is. So they don't give us both of these, they just give us delta T. Now suppose we have another car where we photograph the speedometer at uh, one second intervals and we get the following data. So, uh, I guess this car is already in motion. Um, so when we start the stopwatch, um, when we look at the speedometer and take a picture of it, it says 20 meters per second. Then one second later, the velocity is 20 meters per second, and two seconds later it's at 20 meters per second, and so on. So if we plot this data, uh, we get the following graph. Okay, so at one second it's going at 20 meters per second, at two seconds it's going at 20 meters per second, at three seconds it's going at uh, 20 meters per second, uh, and so on. So our graph is just a horizontal line right there. So uh, if we pick the points 120 and 320, we can calculate the slope or the acceleration. So we're picking these two points here, and we're going to calculate the slope. So the slope is the change in y, and there is no change in y. It's all at 20. But in any case, 20 minus 20 on top over the change in x. Well, there's a change in x. It goes from 1 to 3. So 3 minus 1 gives us uh, 2 on the bottom, and so the slope is going to be 0 divided by 2 or 0. And that's what we have here. So we calculate the slope as 0, and the object is neither speeding up or slowing down. That's what the 0 meters per second squared means. It's just cruising along at a constant speed. So it's moving at a constant velocity, and notice that this is a horizontal line. So when the slope of a line is 0, uh, the line is going to be a horizontal line on your graph.
In a velocity time graph, a horizontal line indicates that the acceleration is zero. Now suppose we're sitting in a car that's moving in a straight line and we have, uh, we're photographing the speedometer at one second intervals again. This is a different car. So the time and velocities are as follows. So uh, when we first snap the picture at time zero, the car is moving at 18 meters per second. One second later, we snap a photograph of the speedometer and it says 12 meters per second. Two seconds later, the car is moving at six meters per second. And at three seconds, the velocity is zero, which means we've come to a stop. And then at four seconds, it's going at six meters per second. And the negative sign indicates that it's going six meters per second in the opposite direction, all right? And then at five seconds, it's going at 12 meters per second in the opposite direction. So if we plot these data, we get the following graph. All right, so <clears throat> at time zero, you're going at 18 meters per second. At one second, you're going at 12 meters per second. At two seconds, we're going at uh, six meters per second. And at three seconds, the velocity is zero. We've come to a stop. At four seconds, it's moving at a speed of uh, negative six. Now, if we use points 1, 12, and 2, 6, we can compute the slope as 6 minus 12 over 2 minus 1 gives us negative 6. So using these points right here, the slope is going to be uh, the change in vertical, in this case, 6 minus 12. So 6 minus 12. So the vertical change is going to be negative 6 because we're going down 6 units. And then the horizontal change is going to be 2 minus 1. See, 2 minus 1. And so the horizontal change is 1 unit. So the slope is going to be negative 6 uh, meters per second. All right. And notice that the slope is negative, negative 6, and the line slants downward. So we have a downward slope like that. Okay. A negative slope means the object is slowing down or speeding up in the opposite direction. So in a velocity time graph, if the line is slanted downward, the object is slowing down or speeding up in the opposite direction. If the object is slowing down, we sometimes say it's decelerating. Now there's some points I want to point out from here. So from 0 to 3 seconds, uh, the object is indeed slowing down. See, it's going at 18, then it's going at 12, then it's moving at a speed of 6 and it's slowing all the way down, and at exactly three seconds, the object has come to a complete stop. Its velocity is zero. But immediately after three seconds, the object begins to move in the opposite direction. So at four seconds, the object is moving at six meters per second in the opposite direction, negative six. So we express that as negative six meters per second. So that means the object is sped up in the opposite direction from its original motion. So what's happened here is that you've got your object, like right here, it's moving in a positive direction, slows down, slows down, slows down, then exactly three seconds it stops, and then it starts going in the opposite direction and starts speeding up, okay? So this line indicates that the motion of the object is slows down, slows down, slows down, slows down, stops, starts accelerating in the opposite direction. All right. Okay. Let's try a problem. A car is moving north in a straight line at 12 meters per second. Eight seconds later, it's moving at 32 meters per second. So let's find the acceleration of the car, and then we'll figure out would a velocity time graph of the car be a horizontal line, a line slanted up, or a line slanted down? And is the car slowing down, speeding up, or maintaining the same speed? All right, so let's try and solve it. Here's our formula for calculating acceleration. It's change in velocity over time. Final velocity minus initial velocity over uh, final time minus the initial time. So the final time, it's moving at 32 meters per second. So that's going to be uh, t VF. And then it starts initially at 12 meters per second. OK, so originally it's moving at 12 meters per second. And then the final time, well, they don't give us a final or an initial time. They just give us the total time elapsed. So under those circumstances, we just assume that the initial time is zero and the elapsed time is the uh, final time. So TF is 8 and the initial time is zero. So 32 minus 12 divided by 8 
gives me 5.5 meters per second squared. So that's the answer to the first part. That's the acceleration of our car. Each second, the velocity increases by 5 meters, 5.5 meters per second. Now since 5.5 meters per second is a positive number, uh, the velocity time graph would have a positive uh, slope and be slanted upward. So it would be, it would look like this, velocity, time, and then the line would be pointing up like that. And since the uh, graph has a positive slope, it means the car is speeding up, okay? For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been physics lecture number three, velocity time graphs and acceleration.